Hello and welcome to Chabot News for October 21st, 2015. I'm Anthony Hamilton and in today's news we'll have the latest on an exciting presidential race. Liliana will bring us the news on the new Star Wars movie and Robert will talk to us about the latest news on the Warriors and Raiders. All that and more on Chabot's News. Vice President Joe Biden has announced that he will not run for the 2016 Democratic bid for president. I believe we're out of time, the time necessary to mount a winning campaign, the vice president said. From the White House Rose Garden with his wife, Jill Biden, and President Obama by his side. The decision ends months of speculation about whether Biden would step up to the challenge Hillary Clinton, the current frontrunner for the Democratic nomination. Biden goes on to say in his announcement that even though he will not be running for president, he will be far from silent in this election, saying, I intend to speak out clearly and forcefully to influence as many as I can where we stand as a party and where we need to go as a nation. This is good news for Hillary Clinton. She is far from having the Democratic nomination locked. She has had to fend off attacks from Republicans scrutinizing her using a private email account and server, as well as her actions ahead of the September 12, 2012 Benghazi attack. A New York police officer died after he was shot in the head Tuesday night while chasing a robbery suspect. Authorities say Officer Randolph Holder was shot while responding to reports of a gunman and in East Harlem, and he died a few hours later. Police Commissioner William J. Bratton said he was the fourth officer killed in the line of duty in this city in the past 11 months. The suspect, who has not been yet identified, wanted police for questioning in connection to a previous shooting. According to a law enforcement official, the man who police say shot and killed Holder has close to 20 prior arrests, some for violent crimes according to NYPD records. Police in the East Bay is warned about a rise in shoulder surfing, where thieves look over a customer's shoulder while using the ATM to steal PIN numbers and steal money from their bank account. San Leandro police, among other law enforcement agencies, have seen this take place in a number of circumstances. The second you step away with the money and card back in your wallet, the suspect jumps over to the machine that you've been on and reopen the account and continue the transactions. Dating back to May 19th, sums of 1,000, 1,300, and 1,600 was stolen from the Bank of America on East 14th Street using these tactics. On September 27th, undercover officers arrested 33-year-old Blade Kittrell of Oakland. He was taken into custody and had $665 in cash. Officers encourage customers to be leery of anyone whose eyes are glued to your screen. We might have some undercover officers that will be there to watch your back and to stop those criminals from offending, Lieutenant McManus said. Star Wars The Force Awakens is breaking new ticket selling records this year as the pre-sale began October 19th. Online ticket selling sites such as Fandango reported in repeated crashing of their site due to the high volume traffic. AMC has stated that over a thousand shows have already sold out in the first 12 hours, while IMAX sold $6.5 million worth of tickets in their theaters. Because of the high demand, shows continue to be added online for fans to buy now. Theaters are adding to the excitement with different events and promotions. Some theaters will be playing all movies in the franchise just before the release of the new sequel, while others will be featuring 3D glasses modeled after different characters. The new sequel will be bringing former characters from the first three films. The film will be officially opening on December 18th with some shows on the 17th. A Southwest Airlines flight turned around and made an emergency landing in Los Angeles late Sunday after a woman aboard the plane and allegedly claimed a man tried to choke her because of a reclined seat. According to the airline and witnesses, Southwest would not confirm that a choking incident involved but said flight 2010 from LAX to San Francisco International Airport returned to Los Angeles to allow police access to the cabin because of a rapidly escalating situation involving passengers who were not traveling together. Witnesses of the altercation back up the woman's story. FBI spokeswoman Laura E. Miller said that a passenger was detained for questioning after the plane returned to LAX, but no arrests were made. The remaining 136 passengers switched planes and would arrive in SFO about five hours later. 
according to Southwest. Warrior fans, are you ready for opening tip-off? We are now less than one week away from opening tip-off inside Oracle Arena, also known as Roarco Arena, as the Golden State Warriors set to defend their NBA title in the 2015-2016 season. The Warriors are scheduled to face the New Orleans Pelicans, a rematch of the first round of the 2015 NBA playoffs. Fans in attendance will be treated to a pre-ceremony event to watch their Warriors receive the championship rings and watch the banners raised inside Oracle Arena. The Warriors will also be wearing the Larry O'Brien trophy on the right side of their shoulder opening night to, only, to commemorate the 2014-2015 championship season. Good news coming from Oaktown regarding the Raiders. According to several reports from Fox Sports, the Raiders might be staying at Oakland, new stadium or not. After joining with the San Diego Chargers for building a $1.2 billion stadium in Carson, California, the NFL might be considering moving only one team in, in L.A. instead of two which means owner Mark Davis will have to call a temporary truce in Oakland, signing a two-year lease at the O.Co. Coliseum. A momentary pause makes sense, then. It allowed the team to regain leverage, field offers from Oakland, and again, perhaps San Antonio, a readjust its finances and maybe even ownership structure. In the meantime, the Raiders will face the San Diego Chargers this Sunday in San Diego at 1.30 p.m. That's it for sports. Back to you, Anthony. That's it for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the Mass Communications Department here at the Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at ChabotTV.net. Stay tuned to KCTH 27 on Comcast for more Chabot TV.